Uh, thank you, Mr. Belokas, for your uh, welcoming words. Um, so in the next uh, 12 minutes, I will uh, present you our, uh, the EU uh, ship uh, recycling uh, regulation. Uh, the concern we have in relation with this regulation and also how to uh, overcome uh, them. So, uh, yeah. so at, uh, at EU level, the whole process uh, on addressing the ship recycling uh, started with the tentative application of the EU waste shipment regulation, which is the translation into EU law of the Basel Convention on the transboundary movement of hazardous uh, material. Um, with the time, it has been evidence that uh, the Basel Convention has been uh, inappropriately and inadequately designed for the recycling of ship, and this mainly for two reasons. The first one is that it's very difficult to determine when a ship becomes a waste and also what country is uh, actually exporting the ship. But with the, Hong Kong, the adoption of the Hong Kong Convention in 2009, the, the parties to the Basel Convention uh, agreed that the Hong Kong Convention provides an equivalent level of control uh, than the Basel uh, Convention. And this allow, this allow in 2012 the EU Commission to make a proposal on the EU regulation for uh, on ship recycling which was eventually uh, uh, which eventually entered into force in December 2013 so even if the regulation has entered into force it's not of application yet so um, the EU regulation reflects to a great extent the requirement of the International Hong Kong Convention and also very uh, importantly uh, allow the uh, recycling of EU flagship in non-OECD countries. As, as you may know, the uh, EU regulation uh, is flag neutral when it comes to the obligation for all ship visiting EU port to have an inventory of hazardous material on board, but it's directed only to EU flagship when it comes to the recycling uh, operation itself, and also uh, that EU flagship are excluded from the scope of the EU waste uh, shipment regulation. So, but in practice, uh, because the Hong Kong Convention has not entered into force yet, and because the EU regulation is not of application, uh, the member states and also ship owners are incre increasingly facing application of this uh, wrong, uh, wrongly appropriate uh, Basel Convention. And an, addition, an additional requirement under the EU regulation is that the Commission, by December 2016, will have to provide uh, the Member States and the Parliament with a report on the vi feasibility of a financial instrument facilitating the safe and environmentally sound recycling of ship to be possibly accompanied by a legislative proposal. And basically the aim of this financial mechanism would be to avoid uh, easy uh, circumventing of the EU regulation by flagging out. And that's why for a level playing field, the ratification of the Hong Kong Convention is really needed. Because ships will have no other option than being recycled in facilities being Hong Kong compliant. So as I told you, the EU regulation uh, has uh, several application dates that are listed at the end of this presentation uh, for, your, uh, for your information. And we believe that the e-regulation can play a key role in the ratification process of the Hong Kong Convention. As, as you may know, the major recycling states are located in South Asia, where 70% uh, of the recycling activity uh, take place in the in intertidal zones, which 
the intertidal inter zones is something that is um, uh, covered by the EU regulation. But what we are experiencing now is that the major recycling states, but also the flag states, are playing a game of hide and seek to, to whom will be the first ratifying the Hong Kong Convention. And for this, the uh, entry into force of the International Convention is subject to a prolonged pro period. And we believe that the current development at EU level, and especially at the EU Commission level, are currently very counterproductive. Because EU ship, as you may know, uh, EU flagship, as you may know, will have to be recycled in approved facilities by the European Commission. And with this view, with this aim, the Commission is elaborating on guidance, on a guidance document that includes uh, interpretation going beyond the current requirement of the regulation. So this guidance aims at facilitating the uh, inclusion on the EU list of approved facilities, but in fact is disincentivizing any ship recycling facilities situated in intertidal zones to apply to the EU um, uh, regulation. So basically, implic implicitly, the EU, through this uh, guidance document, is putting a ban on beaching, which is not covered by the International Convention. So I, I would like to make it clear here that EXA intention is not to, to promote uh, the beaching uh, method as it stands now, because we know that the oc occupational safety and health uh, matter are not uh, ideal at this stage. But a failure to provide an incentive to, uh, to some model yards that have the potential to be included on the EU list uh, may create uh, a two tier uh, ship recycling market worldwide. And this is the last thing we want. And the inclusion or not of uh, ship recycling facilities on the EU list, uh, according to us, should not be preempted by any EU guidance document. And each facility, using any methods and located anywhere, sh anywhere should be uh, addressed on a case by case basis and also the progress made towards uh, compliance with the Hong Kong requir uh, requirement should be monitored. And a, a potential solution to, uh, to this is indeed to make use of the verification and approval requirement under the EU regulation, which can play a strategic role in motivating those facilities to, uh, to apply at least and possibly to be included on the EU list. And this will also provide a breeding ground towards a ratification of the International Convention. But, of course, this cannot work without proactive action and responsible behavior during the interim period before the uh, full application of the EU regulation and the entry into force of the Hong Kong Convention. So, the interim period could be bridged uh, uh, by the use of the EU, EU list, the facilities that are listed already on the, on the list of approved facilities, and also by uh, having on board uh, ships an inventory of hazardous uh, material, which would avoid to a great extent the, uh, the, um, the application of the Basel Convention. And this will also um, give an important move forward to a, to a worldwide level playing, level playing field. Sorry. And of course, ship owners have a responsibility to ensure that their ship are recycled uh, in a safe manner, especially during the interim period. And to this end, uh, EXA has uh, uh, provided the shipping industry with some uh, recommendations. Uh, there are six in total that are listed in a policy paper that is available on our website. And for example, one of these recommendations is that ship owners should monitor any individual ship recycling operation and undertake any recycling project with a view 
at improving standards in line with the Hong Kong Convention. And this uh, brings bring us to the conclusion of, uh, of the presentation. Uh, the first one is that a swift ratification of the Hong Kong Convention is crucial to ensure a level playing field uh, at uh, a global level and also to ensure a unique re regime worldwide. The European regulation on ship recycling can play a strategic role uh, in this process if the application process is maintained open and also encourage any efforts made to be Hong Kong compliant. And last but not least, the proactive action and responsible behavior are required during the interim period. So as I told you, the EXA policy paper is available on our website for further information. Um, in the next slides, you will find the different application dates of the EU regulation. This is for your, uh, for your information. And I thank you for your intention, and I will be happy to answer any of your questions.